I honestly uh, really um, feel very strongly about this uh, next uh, segment of, and it comes from uh, News One Now, the Roland Martin Show. Um, for those of you who think that organization and organizing and voting doesn't matter, I am doing this particular clip for you. The moral movement, which is going full blast in North Carolina, has obviously had a, a major effect, and they are continuing. Now, if you're not aware of what the moral movement is, it's a bunch of people coming together and looking at uh, issues that affect them on a moral basis, not through the eyes of black versus white, not through the eyes of Christian versus Jew or Muslim, not through the eyes of Republican versus a Democrat, but through the eyes of what is right for you and what is right for your neighbor, okay? Now, this moral movement started about, uh, I wanna say 10 years ago uh, with, I don't know, maybe 15 people or so and it's grown by leaps and bounds uh, throughout the state of uh, North Carolina and um, the uh, Reverend Dr. William Barber uh, is uh, consistently going around to uh, various different states um, and not just lecturing them but helping them to set up their organizations in order to push on moral issues. Now. It's taken him 10 years to get to the point where he is now. And if you really want to look for concrete uh, effects uh, of people of all colors, uh, nationalities, genders, sexual orientations, you have to look no further than to the fact that even though uh, Hillary Clinton did lose North Carolina because of suppressions of the vote. Changes are being made that are going to uh, help that state going forward. And I believe those changes are going to become rock solid after the redrawing of the districting lines and a new election, which I believe is going to occur in March. Presently, the uh, state legislature um, and the uh, districts are drawn so that the Republican Party um, has a supermajority in both houses. That, those districting lines were challenged and taken uh, up to the state Supreme Court which ruled in favor of the moral movement and which have ordered uh, the redrawing of the districting lines so that they more properly represent the uh, makeup demographics of the people of North Carolina. And new elections are to be held so that there will be a new makeup of the uh, North Carolina House and Senate without that supermajority of uh, Republicans. Because uh, just based on the numbers alone, there are more Democrats in the state of North Carolina uh, than uh, Republicans. So for uh, the North Carolina uh, House and Senate to all have supermajorities, you know something is up. But that wasn't the only uh, thing that uh, they were pressing on. They got rid of the uh, governor. Uh, they were able to successfully uh, push back against the legislature trying to uh, limit the powers of the new Democratic governor. And um, they are also uh, making uh, major inroads regarding uh, health care for the residents of North Carolina, which help not just the urban areas, but um, more importantly, the rural areas. They have been uh, very successful in even appealing to the all white uh, Republican majorities in certain counties uh, who uh, finally realized that uh, it's not those people 
uh, that uh, it's not uh, black people or minorities uh, that uh, are uh, benefiting um, as much as um, it is also the uh, white uh, women and men in the state that are benefiting from uh, the policies that they are getting ready to repeal. In uh, particular, uh, they're getting obviously getting ready to try to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which is going to hurt a lot of uh, rural hospitals and cause a bunch of them to close. But anyway, um, that's just giving you a quick overview. Here is a uh, the uh, Reverend Dr. William Barber, and he's going to uh, give you, I believe, a history uh, of the accomplishments and the hard work it took to get where he is. Donald Trump and his right wing agenda is not letting up the fourth weekend he's been president. Guess what? And more protests. Saturday, nearly 80,000 people turned out in Raleigh, North Carolina for the 11th annual Moral March led by the North Carolina NAACP and its president, Reverend Dr. William Barber. Demonstrators rallied against President Trump's executive orders on immigration in the Muslim ban, North Carolina's voter suppression laws, as well as the GOP's plan to gut the Affordable Care Act. Here's some of the speakers. And when you name it the Obamacare as a slight, because you're trying to racialize, you're trying to negative, ne make it negative, just like you used to label certain things communism. And when you do that, and when you want to take health care because you despise a black president that did what you wouldn't do, and then you want to take that money and give tax breaks to the greedy, then bowing down and standing down is not an option. Of course, uh, again, there were a number of other speakers there as well. We'll have some of that for you in just a second. We're also trying to get Reverend Barber uh, on the phone line as well. On our panel today, Eugene Craig, CEO of the Eugene Craig Organization, Law Victoria Burke, political analyst and writer for NBC Black. Uh, folks, this was interesting. This is the 11th annual event. And if you go back, 2006, when they held this first event, that actually positioned what took place in 2008 the massive turnout with Obama uh, in that election, what took place in 2012, and what we saw in 2016, the throwing out of Governor Pat McCrory, uh, the election of a Democratic uh, Attorney General, and the flipping of the state Supreme Court as well. Uh, this is an example of uh, how a movement, it takes time to actually build Eugene. Uh, and if you are Democrats, it, I mean, no, it does. I mean, bottom line is this year. Uh, and so this thing started with 16 people getting arrested in North Carolina, largely African-Americans, and all of a sudden the issues they were trumpeting also began to attract whites, uh, Latinos as well. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a supporter of, of, of fusion movements. Um, you know, I think coalition building is one of our lost arts, uh, especially in this town. Um, you know, do I agree necessarily with uh, the perspective on the issue that Dr. Barber carries, not necessarily, but um, I can appreciate uh, where he's where he's going with things. Uh, I remember, Lauren, you talked about, mm, about the, oh, well, what are you doing in North Carolina? How's it working? We've seen the result in terms of turnout, in terms of how they have been able to target clergy, bringing folks in, driving issues, not necessarily party, driving issues. Well, yeah. I mean, I, obviously we see the turnout. Obviously they got rid of the governor, which was a huge, huge accomplishment that I think nobody predicted. Nobody thought that would happen. Unfortunately, what they didn't do was they didn't win North Carolina for Hillary, and they haven't yet gotten control of the gangsters in North Carolina and the Republican Party who keep closing polling places. They're, they're but, headed for that. But, they're but, headed but, for that. But remember, but remember uh -huh. their actions did force the court decision to throw out the districts that suit. And, and, and here was a piece of what I think, what I think is important when you talk about in terms of, in terms of what, uh, what they did. First, you have to enlighten people. Absolutely. And, and then yeah. once you enlighten them, they also had massive training mm -hmm. where they've actually gone county to county to county teaching people in terms of uh, this whole idea of moral resistance mm -hmm. and also challenging white clergy who oftentimes have been sitting on the sidelines. Well, yeah, absolutely. They've done that. At some point, though, I mean, we have seen we're seeing these mass movements now. Obviously, we saw the Tea Party. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing the Indivisible, indivisible Movement yeah. do what the Tea Party did. 
Uh, but at some point, this has to translate into taking people out of power. That's what this is about. The Tea Party, everybody I thought really didn't take them seriously until they, until they started bumping off some, some fairly mainstream middle of the road Republicans. Yeah. I think I think that what Reverend Barber is doing is like nothing else in this country. Obviously, he's doing something nobody else is doing. The fusion piece and the number of people he's getting out on a regular basis, not just once a year or a few times a year. It's regular. It's regular. So it's huge. But they've got to take some people out of power in North Carolina. It's but a tough state. To, but they got to take some people. But the out piece, of power. though, uh, you have. And they did. They took the governor. Here's the deal, though. You, you, can take, you have to take people out of power, but we can't ignore the reality that what you're also dealing with is. Gerrymandering. Oh, absolutely. It, it's, it's much harder when literally well, you take the whole legislature, you control all of, you control the process, and you pretty much are rigging these seats. And then Eugene, and that's real. Uh, how gerrymandering plays a big part of look, this. I'm a Republican in Maryland. I, I understand gerrymandering uh, all too well. Uh, I mean, we went from a four-four state to a seven-one state in the congressional side, and we have supermajority Democrat supermajorities in both houses of, of our General Assembly. When it probably should be, uh, it probably would be pretty even. If we had all single member districts. I mean, the cases would have been fought in the uh, appellate courts, the Supreme Court, right now. So I'm a, you know, I'm a person that you know believes in independent district district commissions. Um, you know, take it out of the hands of political players. Well, it's not Jordan, that's not uh, uh, Now I like Lauren Victoria Burke. Okay, um, and I'm not really sure where she comes down on some of these issues, but apparently she wasn't listening because when she just started talking about uh, taking people out. What do you call taking out the governor, taking out the attorney general, taking out the conservative state Supreme Court? I call that taking people out, okay? And there's probably a lot more people that they took out that I'm not aware of that uh, Dr. Barber uh, is going to make mention of right now. On the phone line right now is Reverend Dr. William Barber. Dr. Barber, glad you uh, are joining us. First of all, uh, congratulations on a uh, quite successful uh, gathering in Raleigh, North Carolina over the weekend. Uh, and the thing, again, that, that I keep talking about is uh, it's a slow build. Uh, it's not a situation where this thing, this thing will just happen overnight and you'll see the results uh, of all of the work. Well, you're exactly right. Thank, thank you for having me. I'm sorry this hotel is having some technical difficulties with the internet. But you know what? I, I heard my sister say about taking people, um, you know, out. Part of what has happened is folks don't know the depth of this movement. First of all, we've been at it for 11 years. We started with Democrats were in office. We've been able to mobilize clergy of all different faiths. We've been able to mobilize Republicans are with us, Democrats, uh, uh, gay, straight, young, old, black, white, and about the political piece, we have taken people out. North Carolina was the only place where incumbent Tea Party has lost in Western North Carolina because of the Mall Monday movement. We were able to not only win the governor's office, but the Secretary of State's office, the Attorney General's office, and a black man in this state won 76 counties, uh, won by 350,000 votes for the Supreme Court the first time in history. We now have two African Americans on the Supreme Court. So, you know, you can go on and on about victory. We won in the court. We won against the worst voter suppression case in the country since Shelby. We beat them 13 times in the courts over constitutional issues. We've won a new election this year. They have to redraw 60 districts, and we're going to have new elections because of the courts. In North Carolina, they won a super majority ruling because of the gerrymandering. They packed 51 percent of African Americans in the 27 out of 120 House seats and 49 percent of African Americans in the 19 out of 50 Senate seats, thereby creating what the courts call apartheid districts. So that even when you had 150,000 more progressive vote than you did uh, regret, uh, extremists, we could not overcome that. However, we went to court. So our movement is not just our mobilization. It's a voting strategy. It's an academic strategy. It's a legal strategy. It's a building allies. We're now organizing in Mitchell County. It's 99% white, 89% Republican. And we can mobilize in that community, you know, and gather four, five, 600 people at any time. And they took some of the incumbent Tea Party out in that area. So there's a depth level. When we mobilized yesterday with almost 100,000 people, 55% white or so, and young people were there, we didn't just mobilize, we also gave people things to do post the mobilization. 
So we'll be marching in the congressional office. We'll be having a mass uh, people's mall um, 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 lobby day. We'll be meeting these legislators back in the We're in this for, we're trying to undo the Southern strategy that has had hold on the South for 50 years. You cannot do that in just 10 years. But what you can do is you can build the kind of foundations to do it. And that's why after three years of Mall Monday, we are in fact winning. But you can't build a movement just on an election strategy. You have to change the consciousness of the people and then from there implement strategies to change the electorate. Reverend Barber, also one of the things that I think also is, is, is important that I want to get understand, we're now seeing this happen across the country where right. folks are now showing up to Republican town halls on the issue of the Affordable Care Act because they now now are afraid they will lose it. We didn't see supporters showing up in support of the law in 2009. We saw the opposition. Now Republicans are saying, oh, these are paid folks, but many of these people are constituents in these congressional districts. Uh, how, do you, how, can what, how can moral Mondays, which y'all have been doing there in North Carolina for 11 years, how can that transcend to other states? Uh, and have you had other states uh, reaching out to you saying, how can we launch the same movement in our states? Well, actually, you know, in Kansas, they've now launched, and in Kentucky, we've been working with North Carolina, where there's a movement in Boston and Connecticut. You know, from April to November, uh, we traveled, Stacey Blackman, Sister Simone, Dr. Ford, myself, to 30 to 22 other states, building building uh, uh, foundations. You know, we, going, we were in Birmingham, for instance, rolling. We had 150 clergy in a Jewish synagogue. We're talking about Muslims. Pentecostal, charismatics, Sikhs, Black Lives Matter, fight for 15, a whole bunch of people talking about how do we build in their unique area moral resistance. It may not necessarily go into the same title, but this business of moral resistance, because what it does, and the reason we've had 11% of the people that got arrested with us were Republicans. How do you do that? You go into a community like, as I said, Mitchell County, that's 99% white, 89% Republican. He said, I'm not here to talk Democrat or Republican. I'm here to talk about policies and how your neighbors are being hurt. And you show them that, for instance, 1,700 people in that county are being denied Medicaid expansion. They can't be white, black, Roman, because there's no black people up there. So that <laughs> undercuts the whole argument that this is Obamacare, you know, quote, unquote, black for black people or lazy people. And then you begin to raise with them questions that, for instance, people in Appalachia understand, we call it mountain populism. You're never supposed to kick your neighbor when you're down. That's language in mountain populism. And you begin to show them, yeah, you may have voted for this guy for quote unquote moral reasons over abortion, but did you know this same person just cut your health care, just cut out the ability for you to have living wages, which 80% of North Carolina is not black North Carolina, 80% say you should have a living wage, or you cut public education. And people began to see it from a moral lens. It's a different language. You gotta get away from left versus right, conservative versus liberal, uh, Democrat versus Republican. Those languages are too puny to be on the movement. We have to begin to talk about what is morally, uh, constitutionally consistent, morally defensible, and economically sane. And it is amazing. I did 22 states. Everywhere we went, we had massive crowds, uh, and we didn't just go do sermons. We do two and three days of organizing, organizing. Um, you know, we forget Dr. King didn't run rallies, he ran campaigns. That's a different kind of language when you run a campaign and you're trying to build a movement. You have to put foundations underneath and help people really have an understanding of how public policy is impacted. Lastly, Roland, you look yesterday, nobody on that stage stood to that podium by themselves. We had people impacted. We put a face. We had, you know, a, a woman suffering with cancer who, who will be hurt if this uh, health care is repealed. We had Muslims there. We had persons that uh, uh, will be hurt, women who will be hurt if you repeal. We had workers, white workers and black workers speaking, standing together. It's not about advocates speaking on their behalf. The first hour and a half were people speaking on their own behalf uh -huh. and putting a face on it.
Reverend Dr. William Barber, we appreciate it. I know lots of national media totally ignored uh, this march over the weekend like they have had. Uh, they've ignored more Mondays, uh, but I made it perfectly clear we were not going to do so here, uh, as well as even from the red carpet at the, at the Image Awards uh, on Saturday. Yeah, and we thank you, you know, verse two. And in some ways, you know, that's okay, uh, because the bottom line is we're doing the work. Yep. And eventually the work, is, and what they couldn't ignore was what happened in the election this past November. Nobody thought that would happen. Right. They thought Trumpism would go all the way down, and nobody, people told us we wouldn't win our court case when we first went to case. Well, we, well, we, well, we know that wrong. <laughs> Reverend Barber, we appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, my brother. All right, now the thing I want to point out, in case you missed it or glossed over it, uh, Reverend Dr. William Barber didn't just go to uh, southern states. He went to northern states as well. He went to places like Connecticut. He went to places like uh, Massachusetts, okay? So it, it wasn't like, oh, well, it's just uh, Republican-controlled uh, 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 arenas uh, that uh, he was uh, looking to... I'm not even going to say take down. I'm going to say to change it to become more moral. He's also going to uh, Democratic controlled areas to obviously uh, change them to make them more moral as well, because both sides do dirt and there's no ifs, ands or buts. You could, will never convince me that uh, both sides are, are just as dirty. Just uh, one side is dirty in one way and the other side is dirty in a different way. But dirt is dirt. Right is right, wrong is wrong, and our elected officials need to do right by the people. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not a snap of the fingers. Uh, it's not wishing. It's hard work. And it also comes down to voting. So for all of you people who don't believe uh, that voting matters, uh, I'm here to tell you, and there's a prime example of a situation where uh, the people who exercise their right to vote uh, impacted a significant change on the state of North Carolina, and that change can be exported and replicated across this country.